What's up everybody, Super Dirks fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2006 Porsche Cayman S. Huge thanks to Greg for driving all the way from Cleveland to let me review his car today. So about the Porsche Cayman S, well, uh, you know, these are awesome. This one, you know, is almost nine years old now, basically, but I think that they still look really good. They've aged so well. Uh, it's still such a clean and classy kind of design to it. And, uh, you know, the curves on the Cayman, when it first came out, I mean, those rear haunches are just really good looking. And uh, the way the hatch kind of goes down to a point, it's just a very beautiful design, especially, I just love the rear ends. The front end is great too, looks a lot like the Boxer, but a very aggressive uh, and still elegant looking design. Right, so the interior of the Porsche Cayman, uh, it's a very clean and simple design, uh, nothing too cluttered or crazy, but first things first, uh, getting into this car, very heavy, solid doors, that great German build quality is uh, definitely apparent. And you sit down in these seats, and uh, they're pretty good seats. They don't blow me away, but they're, they, they're very good. They ha hold you really well. The torso support is just about right, and the thigh support's pretty good as well. Um, the, I, I don't really have too many complaints. I mean, they're uh, very nice seats. Uh, next is the steering wheel, which again is nothing crazy. This car is very simplistic in the way that everything is laid out. So, steering wheel, no button on it, no nothing. It's just for steering, which I like. Uh, it has good 10 and 2 notches, a perfect 9 and 3 grip. Next is the gauges in this car, which are pretty cool. This one in particular has red uh, gauge faces, which I actually really like. Jazzes up this uh, otherwise pretty black interior, and uh, I really like that. And uh, the gauges are very simple, clear, easy to read. Nice to have the digital speedometer there in the middle, uh, since the Porsche speedometers are always very optimistic. This one goes up to 190, and uh, so you know the analog speedometer is uh, a little uh, less useful than the uh, digital one, so it's good to have the digital. And uh, yeah, I mean, otherwise, you know, very straightforward. Everything in this car, there's nothing unnecessary, nothing unneeded. It's very lean. That is how I would describe this whole car and this interior. Everything is lean. There's no fat in it at all. It's just the simple, basic things you need, and that's it. And that translates also to the center stack. I mean, of course, this car being a 2006 model is a little bit older, so the infotainment is going to be lacking compared to modern standards. But, uh, you know, you have your CD player and all that basic stuff and uh, a little basic color screen here that does do the RDS so it'll tell you your song names and stuff like that. This one has you know the automatic climate control which is uh, nice to have, heated seats, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, I mean all the buttons uh, have a pretty good feel to them and uh, you know again pretty basic but uh, it's all you need to get the job done and uh, I mean even though this interior is you know a little basic uh, you still have a Bose sound system everything is nicely leather trimmed and it doesn't feel cheap in any way for sure. The size is good in here too. I'm five foot nine and I have plenty of headroom here um, and so even though it's a smaller car you don't feel crammed in any way which is nice. Right so as far as storage space goes in this car you know being a small car you wouldn't expect it to have a whole lot but they got pretty creative with this interior with finding every little space to utilize for uh, storage space and so you have little pockets here in the doors you can fit some uh, knickknacks in and then you have a little cubby underneath the uh, climate controls there which isn't too big but you can fit you know uh, a phone and a few packs of gum things like that uh, you have an ashtray and a cigarette lighter and then you have a meager center console here that is pretty shallow but you could fit a phone or an iPod in there and has a little coin holder and uh, another power outlet in there. Another way they got uh, creative with the storage space is you might be wondering where's the cup holders at? Well they're up here and uh, they kind of flip out and um, yeah so that, you know there are small cup holders so they can expand and things uh, so you can fit normal sized cups in them but uh, again very creative way to uh, find a place for cup holders. So, you would think, well, that's probably it, right? Well, no, because this car is very unique in the fact that it's mid-engined, so you have uh, lots of trunk space in this car. So, first things first, you have the normal trunk in the back, which is shared with the engine. That's what this big hump is right behind me. That's where the engine's at, obviously. So, uh, you know, the rear space there, it's not the best, but, you know, since it's a hatchback, you do have a fair amount of space. You can fit a good amount of things in there. And there's two little uh, cubby pockets uh, on both sides of the uh, engine there as well that you can fit some stuff in. But this being a Porsche, and typical Porsche fashion, has a huge storage area in the front uh, under the uh, bonnet there. And you can, it's super deep. I mean, you can fit an entire week's worth of groceries in there. And so, you know, that makes this car very practical for a daily driver and a car that you can run the errands in and do all that kind of stuff with. 
All right, so let's start off and go for a drive. Uh, you know, it has just a basic key fob here, and uh, in typical Porsche fashion, uh, the uh, ignition is on the left-hand side here, so you just slip it in and start it right up. So this car, uh, the only modification it has is a Fab Speed exhaust system, uh, so uh, it sounds really good. I'll just give it a few revs and let you hear it. So setting off and the 2006 Porsche Cayman S. So uh, first thing you notice is you do sit fairly low in this car. You don't feel like you're sitting on the ground like you're in a Corvette or something, but you do feel like you know you're sitting pretty low, and uh, uh, it's, it definitely feels like a small car, you know, because the way the, the hood drops down in the front there, you have excellent visibility, and uh, you know you can just see the fender bulges there. It's really a cool uh, look when you're looking forward. Uh, visibility is also very good. You know the windows are large enough. There's no blind spot because thankfully they put another little quarter window back there so you can see out just fine so no blind spots I mean large rear window it's really a great car as far as visibility goes uh, so driving along this bumpy park road uh, it's uh, you know definitely a firm ride but I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable it's just again it's firm and this is something you know with an actual purpose-built sports car that's just the way it is and so uh, you know I don't find it to be uncomfortable or anything though but it's, it's definitely firm that's for sure Another thing you notice immediately is this shifter uh, is uh, definitely on the long side, one of the longer ones I've ever used. And uh, you know, but it, I actually kind of like the throws. And uh, you know, once these Porsche gearboxes are broken in, they're so satisfying to use. They're just so well defined with uh, the gates, and it's just so nice and easy to shift uh, from one to another. It's just really great. And uh, you know, another thing that you notice right away is the the throttle response and everything is very, very precise. There's just something about Porsches. The way that all the driver controls are, it's just really always spectacularly well done. Alright, so let's turn over this back road here and uh, see how it does. Straight. It gets up to speed really well and it's got really good punch. You know, being naturally aspirated, there's no lag or anything, it's just boom, you just step on it and it goes. Uh, so we're dealing with 295 horsepower and 251 pounds feet of torque in this car. <laughs> It sounds so good too, but it's plenty of power for this car. I mean, this thing weighs less than 3,000 pounds, so to have that much power is really great. And uh, so, I mean, really the way this feels to me, it feels actually kind of similar to the BRZ, except with a whole lot more grunt. And uh, it's funny because the owner of this car actually used to have an FRS and uh, swapped it for this because, you know, Obviously, the extra power in this is very nice, but here we are coming up to some corners, and uh, let's see how the handling is. It feels like it's on rails. It really feels like the 911 that I reviewed way back when, where uh, the this, this steering is so sharp and precise, and I mean, it just, it literally, it just goes. It just, it literally, it feels like it is on rails. That is really the best way to compare it. Coming up to this tight corner I always take, and this body roll is non-existent. I mean, this thing just, it's so planted. It just, <laughs> it's, oh man, this is such a satisfying car to drive. That's, that's really, uh, I, I just really want to keep driving on more corners because it's really fun. But here we are at uh, another stop sign and I think it's time to see about this acceleration again, shall we? That fast speed exhaust, that flat six sound, it's just, oh man, it sounds so good. <laughs> so anyway, calming down, cruising here, and um, you know, it's a, a very nice car to just drive down the road. I mean, like I said, on the bumpy park roads and stuff, it felt a little firm, but out here, I mean, yeah, you feel everything in the road, you do. But, again, I don't think that's a fault, really. I think, you know, it's very communicative. And, you know, when you're driving down the road, you know every single little thing that's going on. It doesn't keep you isolated from anything. And uh, it's just a real driver's car. That's what this is. is this, this is just meant for driving and having fun. And uh, I, I really like it so far. But anyway, I'm going to drive this car around for a little while longer here. And I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. So I'm driving 
driving this car for a while now, and uh, it's it's really hard to fault. I I can't really. There's nothing that stands out as like, wow, this really needs improvement. Uh, I think there's a really good reason why the Porsche Cayman is the benchmark that everyone else uses for their development of other cars. I know the BRZ they continually have Cayman around for development of that car as well because everyone wants to have a car that handles as good as the Cayman. And I think Porsche even gets nervous, and that's why they won't put a more powerful engine in the Cayman because it will outperform even the 911 probably and it's just just a spectacular layout with the mid-engine I mean and it's just it feels so glued to the road it's just insane and I, it's just such a fun car to drive and uh, you know this one in particular the two things that I can say about this one that probably might not be true of all Caymans one is that this exhaust is a header back system it's the fab speed exhaust and uh, it's a little bit on the loud side it's kind of bassy and uh, you know that's something that could be up for taste I don't know if it would be my choice personally but it's uh, obviously sounds very great and uh, that flat six sound any way you can make it louder though it's good because the stock exhaust can be kind of quiet and so this definitely opens it up and uh, the other thing is about this Cayman in particular uh, and this might be of all Caymans that are now starting to age a little bit is that the brakes feel a little bit spongy um, they're not they don't have quite the bite I used to drive Caymans back whenever they were brand new I used to work at a Porsche dealer and so I remember them having a lot more bite and being really immediate with the way the brake pedal grabbed and this one isn't quite as immediate now the braking performance is still spectacular but it's just doesn't break quite as immediately as I think it probably once did but I mean aside from those two things I mean it's just absolutely spectacular the one thing this car has is an eagerness about it um, the way the gearing is in this car it's a little bit on the shorter side and it just really wants to go I mean even in first gear as soon as you just you know let off the clutch and slowly start to accelerate it just you, it feels like it just wants to go you have to like hold it back so it doesn't just take off and like it just this motor is so willing to rev and the power band in this car is very consistent and it's very linear so there's really no peaks I mean it feels a little bit punchier down low but once you get it up and it just sings in those higher rpm ranges and uh, you really it, it, it just continues it doesn't let up with the power it doesn't die off like some other cars it just goes all the way up to that 7,000 rpm red line it's really impressive and on some more corners here uh, it just it, this is one of those cars that you almost can get yourself into trouble because you feel like you can just keep pushing it and pushing it and there are no limits because especially at least driving at reasonable speeds on public roads there are no limits it, you, it does exactly whatever you want it to do and it doesn't put up any kind of fuss you don't have to fight with it you don't have to work hard to get it to do it it just does it and uh, there's no questions asked and uh, it's just it's really just a spectacular car absolutely love it I mean especially for back roads like this I mean it just it's so composed and so flat and just a joy to drive <laughs> so yeah I may be gushing a bit but like I said I can't really find any fault I mean obviously if you're someone that likes lots of gadgets and infotainment and stuff like that then probably buying an eight-year-old car like this one isn't the way to go but I mean you know if you're looking for a driving machine that has you know a radio which you don't even need because of this exhaust and you know just a great layout with an awesome gearbox great throttle response great steering I mean that's another thing the steering weight is spot on like I mentioned earlier it's very sharp in the you know the way the car steers it's just it's really spectacular like I said and uh, the really great thing about these is now they're even becoming more and more affordable for more people because you know you can find nice used examples for you know just under 30,000 or a little bit over that and you know with low miles and everything else so uh, really it's a <laughs> it's getting to be very tempting for people especially now and I mean it just makes the value proposition even higher than it was back when these were new so um, yeah a huge thanks once again to Greg for allowing me to review his uh, came in here and uh, you know he absolutely adores it and I can see why because it's just uh, between that sound too it's just really a spectacular car so I'll take one last corner with it before you before I say goodbye here and uh, yeah I mean this is like literally a hairpin and it just Grips and grips and grips. <laughs> so much fun. So anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Take care.